Introduction to Forensic Science Forensic science is the application of a broad spectrum of sciences to answer questions of interest to a legal system. Forensic comes from the Latin adjective forensis, meaning of or before the forum. In Roman times, a criminal charge meant presenting the case before a group of public individuals in the forum. One of the earliest records of applying science to solve criminal cases comes from 3rd century China. A manuscript titled Yi Yu Ji, a collection of criminal cases, reports how a coroner solved a case in which a woman was suspected of murdering her husband and burning the body, then claiming that he died in an accidental fire. Noticing that the husband's corpse had no ashes in its mouth, the coroner performed an experiment to test the women's story. He buried two pigs, one alive and one dead, and then checked for ashes inside the mouth of each. He found ashes in the mouth of the pig that was alive before it was burned, but none in the mouth of the pig that was dead beforehand. The coroner concluded that the husband was dead before his body was burned. Confronted with this evidence, the woman admitted her guilt. Matthew Orfila is considered the father of toxicology. In 1814, he published the first scientific treatise on the detection of poisons and their effects on animals. This treatise established forensic toxicology as a legitimate scientific endeavor. Public officials such as Alphonse Bertillon were beginning to apply knowledge about science to the study of crime. In 1879, he devised the first system of personal identification. He is now known as the father of criminal identification. Bertillon's system is known as Bertillonage or anthropometry. Anthropometry is the study of human body measurements, especially on a comparative basis for use in anthropological classification and comparison. This system collects numerous body measurements and categorizes various facial features of a person and was used in the United States and in Europe to identify criminals in the penal system from the late 19th to, to early 20th centuries. Photographs of each individual, a set of complex anthropometric measurements and feature classifications were collected on a card, which were cataloged to serve as a unique identity card for that person. This figure shows how different body measurements were taken. This is the head measure, an early anthropological tool for cranial measurements. Though there were others that suggested that fingerprints could be used as a means of identification, Francis Henry Galton was the first to provide a definitive study of fingerprints and developed a method of classifying them for filing. In 1892, he published fingerprints that provided statistical proof of uniqueness of fingerprints, and his work formed the present system of identification by fingerprints. Many believe Sir Arthur Conan Doyle had a considerable influence on popularizing scientific crime detecting methods through his fictional character Sherlock Holmes. He applied many of the principles of modern forensic science long before they were adopted widely by the police. In 1901, Carl Landsteiner discovered blood can be grouped into different categories now recognized as blood types A, B, AB, and O. In 1910, Albert S. Osborne wrote first significant text in document examination called Question Documents, which is still considered a primary reference for document examiners. Hans Gross was the first to advocate for the use of scientific method in criminal investigation but Edmund Lockhart was the first to show how these principles could be incorporated within a workable crime laboratory. Edmund Lockhart asserted that when two objects come into contact with each other, a cross-transfer of materials occur. 1984, Sir Alec Jeffries developed the first DNA profiling test. DNA allows the matching of suspect to crime scene to be more accurate. Other milestones in science that helped push forensics forward were the microscope, which allowed smaller bits of evidence to be examined, Photography, which allowed clearer representation of the crime scene. Ballistics, which allowed clearer idea of where a bullet came from and enables crime scene con reconstruction to be more accurate. 1923, the first crime lab was established in Los Angeles, California by August Vollmer, a police chief from Berkeley, California. 1932, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or the FBI, under the directorship of J. Edgar Hoover, organized a national laboratory to support all law enforcement agencies in the U.S. The FBI laboratory is now the world's largest forensic laboratory. However, the United States does not have a national system of forensic laboratories. The first private lab was created in Chicago in 1929 as a result of the St. Valentine's Day massacre. There was a rivalry between a Northside Irish gang led by Bugs Moran and a Southside Italian gang led by Al Capone. 
On the morning of Thursday, February 14, 1929, St. Valentine's Day, six members of the Bugs Moran gang and Reinhard H. Schwimmer were killed against the rear inside wall of the garage of the SMC Cartage Company in Lincoln Park. Bert Massey, vice president of the Colgate Palmolive Peak Company, and Walter Olson, president of the Olson Rug Company, used their own funds to hire Calvin Goddard from the Bureau of Forensic Ballistics in New York City, a pioneer of forensic ballistics. Since the police themselves were still suspects, they established a Northwestern University Scientific Crime Detection Laboratory at the Northwestern University Law School, an independent crime laboratory. Calvin Goddard used ballistics and firearms comparison to clear the police. The police raided the home of a hitman for Al Capone. They found two machine guns, which they gave to Goddard to take to his ballistics lab. He test-fired them and proved they were the weapons used in the massacre. Crime scene investigators are the ones portrayed by the show CSI. They investigate crime scenes and collect the evidence for further processing. The photographer visually documents the crime scene. The forensic toxicologist examines body fluids and organs to determine the presence or absence of drugs and poisons. DNA profiling, also called DNA testing, DNA typing, or genetic fingerprinting, is a technique employed by forensic scientists to assist in the identification of individuals on the basis of their respective DNA profiles. Forensic serology identifies and analyzes body fluids such as blood, saliva, and semen. Forensic botanists look to plant life in order to gain information regarding possible crimes. Leaves, seeds, and pollen found either on the body or at the scene of a crime can offer valuable information regarding the time scales of a crime and also if the body has been moved between two or more different locations. Forensic study of pollen, is also known as forensic pollenology, can often be very specific about location and time of year. Forensic hair, fiber, and glass analysis uses microscope, chromatography, and spectrophotography to identify evidence. Fingerprint identification, sometimes referred to as dactyloscopy or palm print identification, is the process of comparing questioned and known friction skin ridge impressions from fingers or palms or even toes to determine if the impressions are from the same finger or palm. Forensic ballistics involves analysis of bullets and bullet impacts to determine the type. Separately from ballistics information, firearm and tool mark examinations involve analyzing firearm, ammunition, and tool mark evidence in order to establish whether a certain firearm or tool was used in the commission of a crime. Forensic pathologist is a medical doctor that specializes in pathology and then forensic pathology. They determine the cause and manner of death, whether it was homicide, natural, accidental, and suicide, which includes performing post-mortem examination and or autopsy. Forensic anthropologists examine skeletal remains and establish the identity of unknown individuals. Forensic entomologists determine postmortem interval and poisons using bugs. Forensic psychiatrists work with courts evaluating an individual's competency to stand trial, defenses based on mental diseases or defects, and sentencing recommendations. Forensic odontologists or forensic dentists they match bite marks and identify individuals using dental records. In blood spatter, they determine the origin of blood using the angle of impact. Fire and explosion investigation, sometimes referred to as origin and cause investigation, is the analysis of fire and explosion related incidents. Question document examination is the forensic science discipline pertaining to documents that are or may be in dispute in a court of law. The primary purpose of question forensic document examination is to answer questions about a disputed document using a variety of scientific processes and methods. In forensic engineering, they examine when something is wrong with mechanical or structural entities and automobile crashes. Forensic scientists must be skilled in applying principles and techniques of physical and natural sciences to analyze physical evidence recovered during a criminal investigation. Forensic scientists must adhere to strict guidelines that ensure careful and systematic collection, organization, and analysis of information, thus providing a safety net to ensure that the outcome of an investigation is not tainted by human emotion or compromised by distorting, belittling, or ignoring contrary evidence. 1923, Fry versus United States. In order for evidence to be admitted at trial, question procedure, technique, or principles must be generally accepted by a meaningful segment of the relevant scientific community. Proponents of a scientific test must present to the court 
a collection of experts who can testify that the scientific issue is, is accepted by relevant members of the scientific community. 1993, Daubert versus Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, admissibility of expert testimony should be controlled by Rule 702 of the Federal Rules of Evidence and that it need not be generally accepted in the scientific community to be admitted. Rather, expert testimony should be admitted if it rests on a reliable scientific foundation as relevant to the issue at hand. The trial judge is assigned the task of ensuring the reliability of, a, of an expert's testimony. 1968 Copolino v. State Scientific tests that may be new and unique are admissible if they are based on scientific valid principles and techniques even though they are not widely accepted in the scientific community. Forensic scientists as an expert witness must establish to the satisfaction of a judge that they possess some particular tr experience, training, education, or the combination of that will aid in the court in arriving at the truth. They provide impartial objective services. They are not for one side or the other, offer only a reasonable scientific certainty, not absolute certainty, an advocate of the truth, and testify to findings and offer an opinion of, to the significance of the findings. During evidence collection, evidence must be properly recognized, collected, and preserved at the site of a crime. Evidence collection technicians are specially trained by laboratory staff to recognize and gather pertinent physical evidence at the crime scene. This concludes the introduction to forensic science.